what is going on in the world right now where it feels like evil is really in our faces like this how do you really go from serial killers to i was going to go right into illuminati oh yeah let's go i mean take care of yourself (laughs) i said (laughs) more crime the great segue to the fact that we are living in troubled terrorists this thing appeared on everybody's for you page and we don't know where from. Where from? Hello and welcome to TMS Hot Take. Yo, 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 back at it again. Where we discuss social commentary regarding things on the internet. Yeah, and, and nonsense. We give social commentary Lots regarding of things on the internet. I think we should cut back on the nonsense, you know. <laughs> I actually no, you're coming do. back to the the seriousness yeah i feel like social commentary is our big bag social the girls have commentary. been saying our our takes are interesting they are enjoying it social commentary with a sprinkle of banter just a sprinkle. oh of course a it's touch. not a political podcast yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> 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 there are no political oh affiliations <laughs> whatsoever when it comes to tms the only affiliation we have is to jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah good yeah uh on today's episode yeah. of a nonsense podcast that has pivoted <laughs> into so much social commentary <laughs> we have uh what were your points again sorry because yours are very interesting Child. okay so we got influencers are lying about their lifestyle oh yes 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 we've also got the year of exposure hashtag illuminati and witchcraft yeah oh, okay uh, yeah <laughs> we're going there social commentary huh? something happened in society <laughs> um and then there is the 4b movement now i didn't tell Courtney yeah, what the 4B yeah, yeah. Movement what was, but basically it's a feminist movement that is coming out of korea that is apparently spreading across the west and this idea of abstaining from everything related to heterosexual relationships so like just not engaging as women the four Bs are like basically Korean words that are used to describe the different abstaining like areas. Okay. So for example, no marriage, no childbirth, no dating, and just no sex with men. Fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have um Tomello. Yeah. Because that video went viral everywhere on TikTok and I, I don't understand I where it, it came know. from. Are you on TikTok like that? No. Though? Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not shocked. Um Basically, this girl called Sabello, yeah. who is, I'm going to say a rapper, yeah, uh, was <laughs> interviewed by... <gasps> I know exactly who okay, you're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah. Oh, and I just didn't clock her name was Tamela. Yeah, her yeah, name was yeah, Tamela. Yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. um, and they got into a bit of an altercation. Yeah, yeah, South yeah, Africa, you, one of your sisters is really doing bits here in the UK. Yeah, she won. Uh, she, oh, absolutely. She said Thanos of the UK and I said you reigning Sorry champion. Sorry to actually. that woman, Midday. Sorry about that. Yeah, is her name Midday yeah. or Malachi or something? I can't Begins remember. With I don't M. know. Uh, I think it's Malachi. I don't know. The fact that I remembered Tabello and not. Ex- and it's uh, her show. Ooh, anyways. And then um, what was the other thing I wanted to discuss? Partners painting each other. Yeah. Um, and the men just. It was so bad. I have no idea what's going on there. And then apparently there's a serial killer loose in London. In London. Ooh, yes. No our alarm. home city. Ring the alarm, Jack Absolutely. the Ripper. No, but it could be serious. Really. I know, that's why I said. <laughs> <laughs> Killing black Ring women, to be specific. Sorry, yeah, that's the bit that I thought was very pertinent to this side of the internet. Killing black women and young black people. Excuse me? Yes. What? Okay, so we'll start there. Yeah. Yes. So, um, obviously, you've probably seen, there's been a rise of, like, young black people going missing like at a crazy rate and obviously we already know things like institutional racism um bias within racial bias within the uh judicial system um mean that a lot of these things kind of go under the radar and stuff like that but with social media a lot of you know noise is being made around you know this person is actually missing can we you know kind of band together as a community to try and find this this person and a lot of people's bodies are being discussed oh trigger warning death um a lot of people's bodies are being discovered obviously lifeless um near large bodies of water and that's the commonality right so a young black person obviously not everybody but a young black person will go missing yeah and then their body will be found near a body of water and so that obviously being seen as some kind of signature criminal minds as that being seen as some kind of signature the girls are theorizing that there is a serial killer loose Mm. in london because the the victim profile is very similar Mm. especially regarding like black women Mm -hmm, or young mm -hmm. black people and then the signature of being found near large bodies of water so either having drowned yeah 
Yeah. And obviously the police conclusions um, or the police investigations have concluded that it's just been no foul play. However, people are like, how have you got this thread of commonality? Yeah. And you're saying there is no foul play when these people maybe were seen, they were out or whatever, and then yeah. they weren't suicidal or anything and suddenly they've drowned. Yeah. And you think that there's no foul play. No foul play. Yes. Dang. So the theory is there is there a serial, is a serial killer, killer loose in London. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be shocked if there was Absolutely one. not. I think the frustrating thing when it comes to like crime and the, ju- the, the justice system in general yeah. is that when the victims are often minoritized groups or people that are often marginalized, marginalized going under the radar, people don't take it seriously until yeah. the numbers start trickling or it starts to get some kind of traction, traction. on social media. And I even think of like back in like the olden days or like even just a couple of years ago where we didn't have the vehicle of social media to draw attention to these things. Yeah. And as much as I don't want to disrespect our, you know, justice system too tough, even though y'all have been found to be guilty of institutional Many issues racism, as well as institutional misogyny. I think just all of the phobics and uh, all of the, in, the, um, the, the genies, <laughs> <laughs> not the genies, <laughs> all of the genies, the isms, the, the, the everything, phobics, all, yeah, the phobics, all of it, just everything, all of it. They have been found to be guilty of yeah. such. And I think it just speaks discrimination. To, yeah, Sorry, that's the that's one I was looking no, for. But, no, we're actually educated <laughs> babes. <laughs> The word choice was... Discrimination. Dis- yeah, discrimination. <laughs> Thank you, God bless you. You went to school. Um, but yeah, I just do think that it's genuinely horrifying, upsetting, yeah. and quite tragic that oftentimes it feels like the general public and civic society have to take matters into their own, own hands. hands for something to be important yeah. enough to have investigation yeah. from our judiciary system. Yeah. Like, that's insane to me. Very crazy. And I, I think you're completely right. I think when it is marginalized groups, when it is people who there is institutional bias against, these things aren't looked at it, um, and looked into deeply enough. And yeah. it's like, you know, why is, and I get it, people can be fanatics, people can, you know, look at something and be like, oh, it's this, this, this. And the justice system is like, you guys are trying to waste our time. Like, we are the people, we are the professionals. So I don't want to belittle anyone who does work in the justice system because I can imagine it extremely stressful. Mm. You lot are trying to do a whole bunch. And there are probably sisters here who are police officers, right, judges, right. lawyers, whatever, um, detectives, which you guys know is actually my aspiration. 110%. An aspirational career. Courtney, the, I'm telling you, Courtney is going to turn, turn up as me. a private investigator at some I point. I wouldn't be shocked. <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked. Genuinely as a little side hustle. What do they call it? Um, pers- private investigator. You need to have your own like spin-off series. I need a crime spin-off series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need a crime series, sorry. Yeah, where you actually just talk about your theories behind. Sisters, if you're suspicious of your man, now should call you. I kind of lack certain things though. So firstly, I just want you to, I don't drive. So you're going to have to cover the transportation. Also, please discretion. You secondly, I can't run. So if I <laughs> if I get spotted, I can't run away. She can't, I'm telling you, discretion as well. Thirdly, I'm a public figure. I could this be recognised. Fam, and also if you see somebody doing something they're not supposed I was to not do. Shouting. <laughs> So maybe I should do a shoot like um, a show like Cheaters. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you when they so ambush good. them with you the bike. So <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. You know when they're going this through the This is not your wife. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Do you have something to say to my... You'd be fantastic. With my vlog camera. Yeah. <laughs> say hi to the internet. Hi guys. So we're currently outside the house of Michael and he is cheating on his girlfriend. What we're going to do right now is to bring, zoom the camera in. Zoom, zoom the, the camera. camera Ken Burns, Ken Burns, Burns slow <laughs> zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so unserious yeah you'd be great at that um, that'd be so entertaining thank you friend Hilarious. i think so too mtv hit me up you're listening now come on commission that series come on i think that would be so funny yeah but like i said i lack vital skills no, but so i'd have to go to some three some kind of training no but even that i think is what would make it funny because i think sometimes people are like it would basically kind of be like oh what's the show that i'm thinking of the one with Neve, um, catfish. catfish. It would be catfish style where you bring. I'm even happy to be your camera person. You know the person with the <laughs> shaky, shaky, <laughs> the shaky camera angles <laughs> that's holding the camera like this, and then you'll be talking to the person. And you know the ones where you're actively trying to like bring the best in that yeah. person. I feel like you'll be like, so can you describe to me why you've decided to cheat today? Yeah. Like, what was it that you know went wrong? Tickled and then the person mind. is there, their um, lower lip is wobbling, and I'm there trying to see. <laughs> Let me get the angle of that. 
mm, for real. And then you'll be hearing the ad libs. <laughs> Literally, I've got to say, with you as well, the way you'll be hearing ad libs in the back, they will cancel that show be so like, quickly. Mm, you were wrong. And- <laughs> wrong and filthy oh funny times <laughs> anyway back to the serial killer incident yeah so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so um ooh. yeah i think there are there are probably sisters in the sisterhood who are you know working as a part of the the crime kind of scene and yep. i think not as criminals but yeah. like i, I think mean, some of them I, I to be fair you're also involved in this <laughs> conversation you know no discrimination um i think whilst that can be the case like okay extremely stretched resources and stuff like that there is no denying that like like you said marginalized communities often go underserved yeah when it comes to matters of injustice and yeah. i i just feel like there is obviously a common thread here yeah. around the the type of victim but also that signature of being found near bodies of water i refuse to believe all these people are just unaliving themselves do you get what i mean yeah, it's like right. at least let's do a deeper dive into this and I don't want to see it escalate into something really serious mm. where it's like suddenly, you know, we're in our 40s talking about there was actually a serial killer on the loose killing people. Ins- insane actual people. Insane. Um so anyway, all of this is not to fear monger and stuff, but you know, take care of yourself. Yeah, Be safe. Stay safe. Please walk in walk in buddies. Walk in buddies. Yeah. Um especially like late at night yeah um and just do the the it's sad that we live in a world like this but it's been like this since adam and eve isn't it that was able so it's sad that we live in a world like this but it is what it is just you know do the things that you know to do that sometimes we take for granted like letting people know where you are Mm -hmm. and i know there's like sharing your location your live location with people if you're walking home alone or you know um just doing the things which we're like, oh, we all know this, but we don't do it. Mm. You know, walking in well-lit areas. And this is not to victim blame at all. Like these people um, had nothing to do with their own deaths, which is very sad. So we just need to be on alert mm-hmm. to be like, you know what, what can we do to to kind of take care of each other? Absolutely. And I think also like don't, Try not to sensationalize the story. I think mm. it's oh, easy. This, but I see, this is the drawback of the internet. Honestly, like it's easy to see this as some kind of like detached story that's happening around you. But I think trying to be sensitive to folks that have lost, you know, loved ones, yeah. people that they really care about. Like this, it's heartbreaking to have somebody that you love deeply be lost to something like this. And so, then so having so to disturbing. deal with the turmoil of having to come on the internet and seeing the people continue to like theorize yeah. it, almost fantasize it. And I know that they're kind be a almost fetishization of like serial killers and like listening to the story and getting the juicy bits and all that kind of stuff so i would say try to be discreet as well as respect any calls from any of the families to like you know respect any of their silences or respect what they've put out on the respect their privacy um don't be out here doxing anyone as well Mm. be sharing information you know when you publicize anybody's like personal information on Mm, the internet okay so a lot of like the afflicted ones or the victims they will like share a lot of personal information or like just even things as like simple as like if police members or folks are taking photos of evidence or Mm, anything mm, like mm, really sharing sharing it on the internet it's like nah if there's any call for privacy then please respect any of those honor those wishes because we don't need to be desensitized to what is a tragic and painful loss for people um so please please act with caution but also discretion and privacy and respect there you go, folks. A public service announcement, if PSA. you will. Uh, take care of yourselves. So, <sighs> what was the take, next? Yeah, how do you really care. go from serial killers to anything I was going else? to go right into Illuminati. Oh, yeah, let's I mean, Take more care crime. of yourself. Yeah, I said <laughs> more crime. The great segue into the fact that we are living in troubled times. Perilous. Peri- Guy, you know what? I was very much, I have been since gingered by Cat Williams' interview and various <laughs> other folks. No, 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 Courtney, because we're going to have a bit of a conversation in one of our upcoming TMS episodes okay. where we're going to be exploring the relationship between power, mm, money, mm-hmm. platform. Mm, yeah. Mm, but mm, I wanted the to three do P's. the three P's. Oh, Damn no, I- money begins with an oh, M. Yeah. Am I dumb? <laughs> Listen, you because I had my moment too when I was looking for discrimination. I said, I said the injuries, please, please, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. We went to school, guys. We promise. PMP, PMP. There you go, pushing P. You were thinking about pushing P because I was thinking money. I was like, P, okay, P's, cool. Yeah, yeah. The, the three P's, but one of the P's is, is an M. Is it <laughs> ABC? How close is M to P in the alphabet? I said, anyway, L M N O P. Yeah, there you go. It's close, it's, it's close. quite close. 
but they're three Ps. Um, we'll have a conversation, a very serious conversation about that upcoming soon. But I actually wanted to talk a bit about this year feeling like the year of exposure. exposure. Things are coming out of the woodworks. We've got somebody like Sean Combs, mm-hmm. Puff Daddy, and mm-hmm. a lot of the federal investigations into a lot of the things that he's been doing recently. We've got person after person after person coming out and being exposed for what they were doing. I watched a video recently where a kind of well-known creator, relatively well-known, talked about his experience of going to a Hollywood party mm. and basically running away from what felt like an initiation right into yeah it was quite a serious oh one i'll gosh. send you the link after yes, i listened to it and i was just like whoa this is first of all this is believable mm-hmm. second of all this is scary mm. and third of all like i think of like hollywood and um, oftentimes the depictions of these kind of things on social media and you think wow this is so sensationalized but it comes from somewhere yes so i actually wanted to like hear from you from the sisters like the illuminati yeah. witchcraft yeah. i think one of the best ways that satan detracts from his work is making us believe that it doesn't exist Absolutely. when oftentimes it's right in our face Absolutely. what is going on in the world right now where it feels like evil is really in our faces like this like yeah. what is going on with all of these really high-flying people yeah. coming forward and actually having a whole bunch of skeletons in, in their, their closets closet. yeah yeah remember a couple of weeks ago we were talking about um how Every four years, there seems to be a cycle of something. Yeah, I feel like it's just another. It's another instalment, really. Um, I feel like, firstly, evil has been reigning in the earth for a long time. <laughs> Let's. It's not new. Um, <laughs> different it's forms. It's not new. Different forms. Um, and I think, like you said, it's the platform, the power, the money, like. Kings have been doing crazy things. Do you know what I mean? But now you have things like social media, celebrity mm. culture. Um, more people are getting intertwined with these high and dark places. And it's not to say the high, the higher you go, the darker things get. But I think the more access you have to certain materials, certain resources, certain spaces, the more you can abuse that, right? Yeah, the more yeah. you can abuse your power, the more you can abuse your abuse people because you have more money. And those things can kind of entice people into being controlled or at least willingly giving themselves over to be complicit to evil mm. um, practices. So I feel like what we're seeing, though, is just the exposure of something that has been heightened by new media, a new celebrity generation. Um, But the Illuminati completely believe in them. Oh, 100%. Um, Well, that one's not even contentious. I feel like it's more so them doing the bad things (laughs) that people don't want to acknowledge. And it's like, why? (laughs) Why don't we want to acknowledge that there are people in high places doing very bad things things. to sustain their their success, right? And I do think that there is that element of success, even we see it like, you know, in the Bible or just when you look at certain spiritual practices, that there are spiritual ties. The the whole world is spiritual. Yeah. The whole world is spiritual, whether you want to come um acknowledge it or not, as you said. It, the whole world is spiritual. It doesn't make you, you're participating in it whether yep, you like whether it or you not. Like it or Do you not, get what right? I mean? Whether you're aware or not. So because the whole world is spiritual, there are certain principles that people observe that just work. The law of sacrifice. Now the question is, what are you sacrificing? <laughs> and to who? Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> you know? So I think there's that. It's like, okay, God requires a sacrifice, but all the other gods also require a sacrifice. Yeah. And I think what we're seeing is spiritual practices, which are happening in the dark, just coming into light. Mm. You know, the sexual perversion is a way, is a, mm. is a form of worship. Uh, sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices, physical sacrifices, like it all, as much as it's like, oh, that's so like creepy and dark arts and stuff. These are things that are happening. These are things, that, these are are things that are actually happening. Like these are things with power. It's not the ultimate power, yeah. but they have power. Yeah. And if we do not acknowledge that life is spiritual warfare and there are so many things battling against each other, forces of light and forces of darkness, like deep darkness Mm. we're going to start thinking we're going to keep thinking these things are just conspiracies Mm -hmm. or you know Mm -hmm. these things are just like crimes no these are moments of like deep worship of Mm. demonic things Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. um and so we can't normalize it like we have to continually flag that like this is a problem this is wrong 
this is not normal, right? And I think people think that these, they would never fall into these things, but these things all start with idolatry. They all start with desiring, you know, certain things over your own this purity and goodness of heart and a clean conscience and a good soul. Like if you want money more than you want a good reputation, you're going to do things like this. You're going to serve money and that's going to drive you to sacrifice to that god yeah. that you worship um sacrifice people sacrifice innocence and sacrifice your own reputation Heavy and future people. you know um that's what my thing yep. i think put them all in jail <laughs> but like at the same time let's also i love what cat williams did yeah, you know i, I need I more really but, but then all this i get why people don't do that because exactly. it puts you in a very dangerous exactly. situation exposing evil is risky business it is it is very risky business but you have to decide what side you're going to be on. Are you fighting for light or are you fighting for darkness? This is the thing. And I think it's really understanding that there is no middle ground. There is no abstaining Literally. from this moral conflict. You are part of the conflict. Yeah, because you like it that's the all. thing. If you choose to not pick a side, you're just backing into the shadows. Yeah. And the shadow is darkness. Is that- <laughs> You've decided what side you want to be on. You are complicit. Do you get what I you're mean? Silenced. Like those in the light, it's clear to see where they stand. Yeah. Those who you don't know where they stand, it's often because they're in the shadows. So you're in the dark too, honey. <laughs> you got you got your skeletons <laughs> in the back there. You're in the dark too. To be honest, some of them are not skeletons. Some of them are people. Literally. Real Roaming. real life bodies roaming and it's so sad it's really unfortunate it's very very unfortunate now i completely agree with pretty much everything that you said i think what really strikes me about these conversations is just how well integrated systems of evil are into our culture Facts. like our very culture like the story the guy i'll send you the link after but and i might actually link it link it down below for people to watch it but what really did strike me was just how many people first of all were implicated mm. well-known people and how well established evil has become to the extent that your actual livelihood can feel at threat and yeah. i think it's very difficult for a lot of people that want to be the purveyors of justice but they know that their lives are at stake but i think it's also understanding that your life is at stake irrespective of whether Absolutely. you speak up speak out or not or irrespective of whether you choose to engage in these practices or not you still are going to be fighting a battle yeah. and it's just about choosing which side you are going yeah. to be on very, very willingly. And also making sure that you have a very strong moral compass when mm. you enter into these spaces because that um, popular saying, the road to hell was paved with good intentions. Yeah. And there's a lot of people, even that we know in, in our midst that started off with good intentions and you see their downfall. Yes, yes And it's yes, like yes. when you are so obsessed with getting to sp- very specific spheres of influence when you are obsessed with getting to the top of your game when you are obsessed with this idea of like even being a change maker sometimes it is being very careful that in pursuing that it doesn't become an idol to you and then somewhere down the road somewhere down that yellow brick road all of a sudden the bricks are turning black yeah or red literally and hot to hell um and continually having to check your heart i think what you were saying about social media as well is bang on there is something about evil interaction with interacting with platform Mm -hmm. that really really like does something to people it's that desire and i think specifically idolatry around like oneself and raising oneself to particular heights of fame and happiness and money it's always about the self 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 yeah I think if you are so wrapped up in yourself and you continue to be that way in the pursuit of the things that you believe will bring change, yeah. child, you will end up with a hot seat in hell Absolutely. before you know it. Absolutely. And it, it's, you see it in the Bible, right? Like Jesus goes into the wilderness, fasting 40 days and 40 nights, 40th day, you're getting tempted by the devil. And one of the ways he tempts him is raising him to this really mm, high height. Right. Look down at this kingdom. I can give it all to right. you, you know? And I think that's, like you said, there is something about platform elevation and desiring that power, that dominion that makes people compromise. Mm. And it always begins with a compromise. Do you get what I mean? It always begins with the desire to shortcut your process so that you can have what it is you so desire above your own moral integrity. Mm. And I think there's that scripture that talks about how, you know, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world, but lose lose his his soul. soul. And I think a lot of us need to be contending for our soul a bit more that and allowing ourselves to be guarded about what our our soul does what our mind our will and emotion partakes in mm. because a lot of things will appeal to those right our desires for wealth our our 
desire to ma- even make change. I love mm. that you talked about that, like our desire to make change. But how? Mm. How are you making right. the change? Because the method really does matter. It the does. method is what determines where you're going to end up, honey. It really does. So it's not just about being results driven, but actually caring about the integrity of your method Mm. yeah so i I think we also need to pay attention to our compromises and our compromises also include what we choose to be silent on and what we choose to ignore and just let go by the wayside and obviously we're talking about people who are in hollywood i didn't see diddy do what he did to go i mean however there were people who did and said nothing Mm. so it's like when we are also you know viewers of evil what do we do about Mm -hmm, it what do mm -hmm. we say about it and i think we were having this conversation about this yesterday about Mm. something else but it's like that deep conviction to be like no justice has to prevail over something and as much as it may be uncomfortable for you as an individual how are you going to be a partaker in justice we're also talking about that on sunday's episode right it's like we can we can condemn all of these things. We can outrightly say, "Oh no, we don't agree. We would never do it." Yep, okay, but yep. when but when you saw it happening, what did you do? Mm. Questions. 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 Anyways, we are purveyors of justice on this podcast. So, so those that have been, you know, committing terrible acts. I do pray that you are brought to justice, but I also do pray for your rehabilitation ASAP because I think there's also that element that can be missing sometimes in the conversation. It's, we need justice, but there isn't a lot of like resourcing or investment into the true repentance and rehabilitation of people that have done wrong. And I think sometimes for a lot of people that are steeped in evil or feel like they're too far gone, they continue to go because it feels like there's no way back and there's no point. It makes me think of that line in Macbeth way back when, where he was like, to return is as tedious as to go earth. So Mm -hmm. I will continue to go. Mm -hmm. And that man ended up, sorry, spoiler alert, if you haven't read Read Macbeth, Macbeth. um, that man ended up dead. Yeah. Dead. Most people do. Most people do. And yeah, it's, it's similar to what I was saying in Sunday's episode. It's like, if we are very clear about the fact that change is required and then we all partake in making sure that change happens, that's when we start to see bigger change in society. But we're not invested in that enough Mm. you know we're not invested in calling that out enough as well like actually telling people what you are doing is wrong and sticking by that like it's not just a thing i'm gonna go off and gossip about it's not just a thing i'm going to use as an example in the future actively if i can see you running into fire to not correct you is me allowing you to burn yeah you know so let me stop you Mm. in, in your tracks and as much as that may be an uncomfortable conversation to have to tell somebody what you're doing is nonsense like this is really bad what would you rather see them destroy themselves and other people Mm. or you just have an uncomfortable moment having to tell them you're running towards destruction? Mm. Child. On the vein of calling people out, actually, Mm. I think that's quite a nice segue into talking about Big T in the cut. (laughs) The Thanos of the UK, (laughs) Mr. Mello. Mr. Mello. Big T in the cut. So if you haven't seen, um, (laughs) on TikTok, I was talking about this with my friend yesterday that like, this thing appeared on everybody's for you page and we don't know where from where from i didn't have a clue what was happening just suddenly went on tiktok i get hit with a video of this girl walking us through her outfit um and she's like you know this is from plt this is from you know plt i also think this is from Shein. and then the interview was like mm, yeah it makes sense and i said well that's a bit of shade shady and the girl who was running us through her outfit is called tamello mm-hmm. um and i'm assuming she was being interviewed by this other lady gorgeous lady actually um and she was just like one thing you're not gonna do is throw shade at me or belittle me yeah and miss tabello aka thanos of the united kingdom threw it right back at her and i don't even think the interviewer was ready nope for the way this woman dragged her to hell and back but i think this is um a great example of a couple of things 100 percent. great example of a couple of things one don't let anybody belittle you because of your ah. age don't let anybody belittle you because they do not approve of your choices exactly either like 
the way this lady was trying to throw shade at mm-hmm. her was like, if you believe, and I think I saw Coco Sorrell say this on her mm-hmm. TikTok, which I completely agreed with. If you believed this woman was so beneath you, why did you invite her on your show? Why did you interview her? And I why think did you it's interview the power. her? It's for the power play. And it's, it's crazy because even Tamela was like, you brought me here. Yeah. You, this is an interview about me. Like, why did you bring me here basically? And I think she let her know if you brought me here to spotlight me i'm gonna be spotlighted and i'm not gonna allow you to bring me here to basically belittle me so i will show you exactly what i'm made of and as much as i didn't agree with her methods i didn't agree with the interviewer so it was just like you if you if you put out rubbish you're gonna get rubbish back play stupid games you're gonna win something stupid. stupid prizes and also